Up next, we have Jake Fulton. Jake is a senior in the McDonough School of Business from Bill Recca, Massachusetts, majoring in accounting and finance and minoring in government. Aside from his role on the Gap Board, he is the treasurer of Relay for Life, is an orientation advisor for new student orientation, and works in the Kennedy Residence Hall office. In his free time, you can find him sitting in Selinger Lounge with a large iced coffee and a crossword puzzle. After graduation, he will sit for the certified public accountant exams before starting work at Ernst & Young here in Washington, DC. Please welcome Jake. Good morning and welcome to the Hilltop. I'm honored to be among the first to both congratulate you on your acceptance into the Georgetown University Class of 2023 and share some of the experiences that have made my time as a Hoya so enriching and transformative. One of the privileges of being a senior on the Gap Board is the opportunity to stand up here and address you all. I've actually known for about three years that I'd be making this speech, but I didn't get around to writing it until the day before it was due. <laughs> yeah, while I could joke about how I'm living proof that you can procrastinate this much and still turn out okay, a speech I wrote three years ago, or even three, years three weeks before I wrote this one, would be completely different than the one I'm giving now. And the reason for that is that every day that I've spent here at Georgetown has brought an opportunity to learn something new, or a kind of moment, no matter how trivial or profound, that can make your day or change your life. Now, I could stand up here all day talking about those moments that have made my time here so special, but they only gave me about eight minutes, so I'll keep it to a few. One of the first memories I have at Georgetown occurred at my own early action gap weekend four years ago this week. After an awesome Friday of programming, I walked down to M Street for dinner with a group of other admitted students that I'd met. Now, after we learned the hard way that most of the restaurants in the neighborhood can't accommodate a group of 13 people without a reservation during the Friday night dinner rush, we ended up at Chipotle. <laughs> and when we got settled, I wound up sitting across from this kid named Josh. Um, now, as we started chatting about both being from New England and both being in the business school and both thinking that was really unique at the time, I watched the unthinkable happen. Josh took all the tinfoil off his burrito before even taking a single bite of it. I was shocked. And in that lapse of judgment, my goal of making new college friends was completely overcome by my concern for the structural integrity of this burrito. <laughs> I said, what are you doing? And then it got really quiet because we were both really embarrassed, Josh because he didn't know how to properly eat a burrito, and me because I called someone I met mere hours ago out for it. Anyway, that's the story of how I met my best friend. We ended up randomly living on the same freshman floor, choosing the same two majors, becoming roommates, studying abroad together, and I could go on and on and on. But since that moment during our gap weekend, Josh has been someone who's been there for me throughout my time at Georgetown. We've withstood all the trials of college life, and I'm happy to report that sometime between March 2015 and now, he did switch over to burrito bowls. <laughs> now, one of the most profound mo moments of my Georgetown experience actually came while I was studying abroad at Trinity College at Oxford University. On one of the first days of our program, our faculty advisor, Professor Kirsten Anderson, gave us some sad news. Shortly before the trip, she had been diagnosed with breast cancer. Now, despite the urging of her colleagues to stay home and recover, she decided to continue heading the program. During the four-day break in the middle of the summer, she returned home for surgery and then came back to finish the program with us. But it didn't end there. When the new semester started up, she was undergoing treatment and continued to teach. In fact, she even added a second section of advanced accounting to make sure every student that registered for the course, myself included, could take it. Professor Anderson would teach her 2 p.m. section, undergo her treatment, and then come back to teach another class at five o'clock. Again, just to be there for her students. Now at this stage in the game, I was a junior, and I thought I'd seen the extent of professors going the extra mile for their students, but this was something else. And it was a moment that has continually inspired me to devote as much energy as possible to the things I believe in, to give all I can toward the goals I aspire to achieve, and to do whatever it takes to spend time with the people that I've come to love. One final moment that I'd like to share happened last semester, largely because I needed to fulfill my last theology requirement in order to graduate. In high school, one of my favorite courses was called Voice and Vision, where we spent a lot of time learning about liberation theology, particularly movements in the Catholic Church in Latin America in the 1980s. Additionally, my favorite extracurricular activity in high school was an annual service trip to the Romero Center in Camden, New Jersey, 
a city that ranks among the lowest income levels and highest crime rates in the United States. Now, in a great combination of these high school interests, I found out that Georgetown actually offered a course called The Latino Church Doing Justice that provided an opportunity to take a college-level deep dive into the material that I enjoyed in high school and actually return to the Romero Center in Camden for a class service trip. When I learned that the course was taught by Father Charlie Gonzalez, an 84-year-old Jesuit priest here on campus, and met right downstairs in historic Healy Hall, it felt as if everything had fallen into place for one final quintessentially Georgetown moment for my senior year. I registered for the class immediately. And the course was nothing short of incredible. Aside from the engaging readings and discussions, Father Charlie shared with us his 10-year experience living and serving in Camden. And during our visit in October, we were able to meet some of the people whose lives he had touched. Every moment of that course echoed the values that comprise Georgetown's ethos, community and diversity, being women and men for others, and educating the whole person, to name a few. While this moment in time at Georgetown served as a kind of capstone for several areas of my academic and spiritual interests, it was accompanied by an unfortunate end. Last month, Father Charlie passed away after a brief illness. For the campus community, and particularly for those who knew him personally, it was a tragic loss. But as we've grieved, we found a certain solace in the values he espoused, and his memory challenges each of us who knew him to take up a commitment to finding ways to put our strengths toward the goals of empathy and justice. Now, as I said at the beginning of this speech, I could go on and on about all the things that have made my time at Georgetown so enriching. When people ask me to describe Georgetown, I can't help but look to the moments, whether fun or formative or even heartbreaking, for an answer. Georgetown is spending a snow day learning the fight song with your freshman floor mates. Georgetown is going to your professor's office hours and ending up just chatting instead of talking about the implications of the Second World War on international institutions. Georgetown is sprinting from your Uber to reunite with three of your best friends who just got back from studying abroad because you missed having them on campus so much. Georgetown's cheering in the crowd when your Hoyas beat Villanova for the first time in four years at your final home game. <laughs> but at the end of the day, Georgetown is walking through the front gates and knowing that no matter your background or your ambitions, that there's a home for you here on the hilltop. So welcome home. And before I conclude, I'll tell you one of the things that I was told by a senior when I was a freshman. You come here, you blink, and then you graduate. So class of 2023, while your eyes are open, I hope you'll find those moments, the strong friendships, the unmatchable levels of dedication, and the lessons that extend far beyond the classroom. I hope you'll experience those things that make Georgetown so indescribable. So congratulations. <laughs>